Hello, everyone. And thank you all for joining the program today. I'm Rita, the American Spaces Director at the U.S. Embassy Ghana. American Spaces provides access to current and reliable information about the United States through book collections, internet access, and activities for everyone. But due to the global pandemic, we continue to bring you our programs virtually. However, our American Corner is offering some in-person services. Through virtual programming, we are able to reach Accra and beyond. Where are you viewing us from today? Would like to know. Please type where you are joining from in the comment box. Your comments and questions during the program are also welcome in the comment box. Today, the American Spaces program is aimed at marking International World Day Against Child Labor, which fell on Saturday, June 12th. The team for this year, 2021, as declared by the International Labor Organization, is the International Year for the Elimination of Child Labor. And to educate us on issues of child labor is Mr. Kenneth Mamudu, who will be doing a presentation on the topic, protecting children from child labor, an urgent need in the face of COVID-19. Kenneth Mamudu used to be an English teacher but felt the edge to move into child labor issues. He started the work with the Catholic Relief Services and later moved to work with Care International. In 20, 2008, Kenneth joined the National Program for the Elimination of the Worst Forms of Child Labor in Coco as a remediation officer and went through the ranks to become the national programs manager of the organization. He represented the national program for the elimination of the worst forms of child labor in Coco on several international fora and made presentations in the child labor Coco coordinating group meetings in the USA, Geneva, among other places. He has consulted for several organizations and universities around the world, including University of Chicago's National Opinion Research Center on National Child Labor and Deaf Tech Management Systems Incorporated, the USA on Child Labor Compact Partnership Project funded by a U.S. State Department with me are uh, two of my colleagues who will be supporting the program in the background. Viewers, with a clap or the thumb up emoji, join me in welcoming Kenneth Mamudu as he highlights the issues of child labor around the world. Over to you, Ken. Thank you. Rita, just a minute to share. Yes, that's okay. Take your time to share. Kenneth is uh, somebody who works with various organizations on child labor. He's so seasoned in the field. He knows much about child labor. We are honored today to have you. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. I'm very glad to be part of this discussion today on issues of child labor around the globe. The title for the presentation is Protecting Children from Child Labor, an Urgent Requirement in the Face of COVID-19. First of all, we want us, I want to take us through the presentation profile so that we are familiar with the kind of topics or areas we'll be looking at throughout the presentation. And so we'll have the introduction and then we, the, that will be followed by definition of child labor. Then we'll look at the worst forms of child labor. What are the worst forms of child labor? And then we'll look at the types of jobs that children engage in. And then we'll look at child labor and children's rights. That will be followed by effects of child labor. So we want to look at uh, what effects child labor have 
on the various child, the family, the community, and the nation. Now, COVID-19 in particular refers to children because that is our focus. We want to see how COVID-19 affects children and therefore how it support children not to be infected with COVID-19. That will be followed by protecting children from child labor in the face of COVID-19, which happens to be the main focus of this presentation. The last item will be, we'll be looking at who benefits from child labor. Then conclusion will be the end of the presentation. The Child Labor Day focuses attention on the global extent of child labor and the action and effort needed to eliminate it. This year's World Day Against Child Labor focuses on action that has been taken so far for the 2021 team. It is the first day or the first Child Labor Day or World Day since the universal ratification of the ILO Convention number 182. In fact, so many countries, almost all countries have ratified it now. And this happens to be the first World Day of Child Labor after that universal ratification on the worst form of child labor. And then that is taking place at the time that we have COVID-19 crisis threatening every sphere of life in the world. The COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in so much disorder and distorted the market, the labor market shocks. And a lot of people are thrown out of jobs and livelihood. And when this happens, unfortunately, children are the first to suffer this. And the crisis is pushing so, so many children, for that matter, into child labor. Because of COVID-19, a lot of children have, had, have, have started working or are working for long hours in very undesirable conditions due to job losses of their parents because of income loss of death of their breadwinners. Currently, we have about 200, 218 million children who are in child labor globally, as estimated, since the start of 2020. And this happens to be the highest rise in child labor in 20 years. It's, you can find this in the new report by UNICEF. About half a number are in hazardous work, including mining and farm work, quarrying, fishing, and, and a lot. Children between five and 11 years account for about half of the global figure we just mentioned. The new estimates are a wake up call. We cannot stand by while a new generation of children is put at risk. These are the words of ILO director, General Gal Raidu. We will look at the definition of child labor. Child labor is defined as work, any work that is exploitative. And that also deprives the child of his education because education is very important for the growth of every child for the future uh, independence of every child. And the wholesome development or has, of the child or has potentially potential to endanger the child's physical health, his morals or safety. That is how child labor is defined. And child labor is also based in terms of the type of work in child labor. We want to look at the type of work that the child does, the time of the day that the child, this work is done, the age of the child who is doing this work, and especially the same condition under which this work is being done by the child. The child labor is work that is not in the best interest of the child. In fact, when it comes to child labor, we always say the child interest is paramount. What's form of child labor? What is it? The ILO Convention 182, which is the worst form of child labor, is four classes of work, works form of child labor. They include any engagement 
or recruitment into slavery of all forms of slavery practices, forced labor and bonded labor, including child trafficking. All these form West form of child labor. Another type of West form of child labor is engagement or any engagement or recruitment of children into illegal activities. And some of them include child soldiers and the more. Then tell you any engagement or recruitment of children into pornography or pornographic performances and prostitution also constitute West forms of child labor. Then lastly, any engagement of children in hazardous labor, labor that is harmful to the health and the well-being of the child. That work that affects is, is the kind of work that affects the child's safety, his morals, and, and as defined by individual countries. Types of jobs to get children engaged in. A lot of children throughout the world engage in million type of jobs termed as child labor. They work in fields, in factories, in mines, in surface mining and deep shaft mining, in quarrying, as servants, as housemates, or selling on the streets, or in the shops, and in markets. When this happens, the girls are more likely to be involved in these activities than the boys. Such as cleaning, making food for the house are the kind of jobs that the girls are engaged in. And those are taken care of while the, the parents of the babies do their work. Child labor and children's rights. Children, children's rights are just a subset of human rights and this the focus on children particularly. Child labor violates children's rights to be protected from economic exploitation. Children must be protected from exploitation of all forms from anybody. And when we don't do this, we are violating their rights. And some of the children's rights include, include the right to health. Every child has the right to health must be taken care of by whoever is he's staying with or she's staying with when he is not feeling fine, he's sick. They also include a rise to education. Every, the place of a child is in the school. So every child must be given the opportunity to go to school, to prepare himself for a better, as a, for better citizens in the future. So when you deny the child of the right to go to school, it, it constitutes worse form of child labor. The child also has the right to family life. He must belong to a family who should take the responsibility of taking care of the child. If that is not happening, then the child can be said to be suffering from or being in West form of child labor. The child also has the right to play and recreation. The child spends much of his time playing and learning. And so when the child is prevented from doing this, it forms it constitutes a violation of his freedom. The child also requires protection from abuse and harm. Effects of child labor. And here we, I want to look at the effects of child labor on the child, on the family, on the community the child belongs, and on the nation. There are so many difficult tasks and harsh working conditions that create a lot of problems for the child mentally and physically when they are engaged in such activities. And this results in premature aging for the child, malnutrition, depression, and sometimes drug dependency and many more. That is what happens to the child or the effects of the child labor on the child himself. On the family, Child labor stunts the family economy growth and locks the family in perpetual poverty. When the child is not allowed to go to school, it doesn't benefit the family. Because most of the families keep the children in child labor or on some labors around because they say it's poverty, they have no money to send the children to school. But this 
in the and keeps the family locked up in poverty. We all know that when one child, even one child in the family is able to be well educated, it can turn around the fortunes of the, the, the family and lift them out of poverty into riches or well being. So child labor doesn't help the family, or this is the effect of child labor on the family. On the community, child labor draws the community backwards in terms of development. Because we know that in every community, when we have a lot of educated, literate, well-placed people in society, most of them tend to organize themselves, sometimes individually, they come back to the community and they are able to engage in development work or development jobs, development for the community. We have seen a lot of examples of people who have come back from their well placed places in town because of education and have helped the community in some form. On the community, the effects of child labor also is that it traps the community in a cycle of poverty. Yeah, like I said, if a community engages all the children in, in child labor, it means that they are going to be there in the child labor activities and no child has the opportunity to go to school and to do well and to come back to help the community. And on the economy as a whole, what are the effects of child labor? The child labor affects the manpower resource base of the economy. If a nation allows its children to engage in child labor, it is shooting itself in the foot as far as the manpower resource base of the country is, con is, is concerned. It also results in underdevelopment. An illiterate population results in underdevelopment. And so many of the programs of the government or the leadership will not be understood and that can create a lot of problem. COVID-19 and children. We are, which we are looking at COVID-19 and children because our focus is on the children as far as COVID-19 is concerned. What do we know about COVID-19 and children? We know that children have a stronger resistance and immunity when it comes to COVID-19. We also know that children have a faster recovery rate when it comes to COVID-19. The mortality rate among children, we are told, is very low because of their immunity, the strong immunity they have. But they still need to be protected. They all, even though they have all these qualities, children still need to be protected against COVID-19. Effects of child labor. In fact, the next is protecting children from child labor in the face of COVID-19, which happens to be our main focus for the presentation today. Why do we need to protect children from child labor in this era of COVID-19? We need to do that because children are very vulnerable. They are very innocent. They are helpless. And therefore they depend on adults for protection. Children are also exposed to a number of dangers that they are not aware of. And children are our future leaders. And therefore, we need to protect them from COVID-19. If we allow COVID-19 to carry our children away, we have no future. A nation that doesn't take care of its young, have no future. And that is why we need to protect our children from COVID-19. How do we do this? We need to do this through an increased public awareness or education on COVID-19. We can do this through radio discussions, television discussions and presentations, using the information bands that normally go around our villages and our communities to pass on information or even at worship centers, such as the churches and the mosque and other places. We also need to do this through 
providing support systems and materials. And by this, I mean equipping treatment centers with COVID-19 materials and vaccines, with focus with, with special attention on children. We also need to continue the enforcement of COVID-19 protocols. And for this, we have to focus more on the children. We all know the COVID-19 protocols. If you relax, relax them, we are relaxing them at our own peril and we are endangering the lives of our children. We need to have special social attention to infected children. And by this, governments and civil society and philanthropists could come up with programs that could focus attention on infected children that could help them recover quickly and get them back to school and back to their communities. We need to enforce the child labor laws. Every country now has child labor laws. We've just been told that there have been a massive ratification of the ILO Convention 138, 182. And so every government that has ratified this need to enforce them. There is no use ratifying a law and not enforcing it. And these laws are meant to, pro to protect us and our children, especially the children. We also need more support of funds from industries, especially industries that are engaged in chocolate manufacturing and other cocoa products. I am saying this because uh, in Ghana, we know uh, most of the child labor activities are engaged uh, are in cocoa and in the cocoa sector, in the, in, the, in the farming sectors. And so the chocolate manufacturers who buy cocoa from Ghana have a duty to support us to focus on supporting our children out of COVID-19. I know in other places in the world, there might be other areas that other, other mini industries could support in the elimination, in the, in the support of children against COVID-19. We also need to ensure that children are not exposed to areas that the children could contract COVID-19 as environments that are dangerous. For example, we need to prevent our children from hawking and selling on the streets. We need to prevent our children from working as bar attendants in the chop bars, in the drinking bars, in other places, even in the, the market stores. We also have to be careful the way where and, uh, and how we send our children on errands. So we to, to send them to areas or environments that they can contract the, the virus and even send them in, in less dangerous environments. We need to make sure that the COVID-19 protocols are observed, especially the child must be wearing a nose mask. And when he comes back, we should ensure that he washes his hands with soap or cleans his hands thoroughly. Another place that can expose the child to COVID-19 is fishing activities. Mining activities are all areas that are dangerous for a child to work in. And if we are able to ensure that children don't work in these places, we will be saving them from COVID-19. When do we need to do this? To protect the children from child labor in the face of COVID-19, when? It should be now, we need to take the action now and end the child labor, not tomorrow, not next month and not next year. Who should take charge of making sure that children are not infected with COVID-19 in the kind of work they do in child labor? Or they are, they are not sent to do work that, is, that are described as child labor. First should be the government. It is the government's responsibility to protect its citizens including the children in particular, who are vulnerable and who are helpless and who depend on the adults for protection. We also need 
the support of our development partners in the fight against child labor and the future of COVID-19. We, we, we also welcome philanthropists, individuals or groups who so wish to support us fight COVID-19 as far as children are concerned. The NGOs, the CEOs are also welcome to support in the fight against child labor in the face of COVID-19. Then parents in particular are key in ensuring that children do not contract COVID-19 and the kind of activities we engage them. The community members have a role to play here, ensuring that children are safe from COVID-19. Community members here because as we live in the community and we see children go about certain activities that we consider dangerous, it should, it should be our duty, not just because we are the father or the mother or the uncle, but every child should be, every child's uh, life and health and, and well-being should be our, should be our concern. So the community plays an important role here too. Child labor. Is there really anybody who benefits from child labor? Does the state benefit from child labor? Or is it the community that benefits from child labor? Does the family benefit from child labor? Or does, it, does the child himself, who we want to, we all want to protect, benefit from child labor? None of these benefits, technically benefits from child labor. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to say that in the midst of COVID-19, our children, our future, deserve to be happy. They deserve to be healthy. They deserve to be safe. They deserve to be protected. Because when a child dies, the future dies. The child is the children are our future. And it is our duty to make sure that we have a good future by investing in them, by taking care of them, by protecting them, and by making sure that our future is safe in our children. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for being part of this presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ken, for educating us on child labor. This is a very sensitive topic, and we are happy that you are presenting on it today, telling us what child labor is. We thank you for all the information you have provided. We have some questions from our Facebook viewers. We are so eager. I think we've had a lot of questions, so I'm going to pose the questions one after the other. I, okay. I know that our viewers are listening attentively to your answers. Daniel, Daniel Ajin is asking, if as a family you allow your child to help around the house, can he be classified? Can he be said as child labor? if the child is helping around the house? No, we have distinguished between child work and child labor. Okay. Child work is any work that the child does around the house at the workplace with the, with the father, under the supervision of the father. And this is guided by the number of hours the child will do the work and the kind of work the child engages in. We call it socialization, where the child is also permitted to learn the trade or the kind of business that the father does. And so we are not saying that the child should sit home idle and will not be able to wash bowls or plates. We'll not be able to take care of the sibling when the mother or the father is doing something. No. So we have a differentiated child work from child labor. Child work is permissible under some guidance. Child labor is what is not permissible. Children are permitted to learn the trait of their parents so that they can carry on when their parents are no more. Thank you. 
thank you for that awesome answer. Thank you. So we have to be able to differentiate between child labor and a child just help, helping at home, socialization. Thank you so much for that information. And then there's another question from James also. James is asking that considering um, the poverty level of most of our rural areas and all that, how do you balance the equation? Um, factor, factoring in um, the, the work that has to go into protecting this child because most of the in most of our rural communities uh, would say that uh, they will say oh i don't have enough money to take the child to school and that is um also accounted for as poverty so with poverty at the back of our mind how do you balance the equation so that you don't say that this child it's um it's it's been put into child labor yeah poverty has been one of the major causes and reasons for child labor mm -hmm. but uh when parents complain that their children are in child labor or they're using their children in the forms that are not permissible because they are poor mm -hmm. sometimes you go into it and you realize it is misprioritization some are really poor, but sometimes they are not too poor to be able to educate the child. For example, if you go to certain parts of Ghana, <laughs> parents will buy cloth for every funeral. <laughs> sometimes four times a month, four, five, they have money to do that. When it comes to the child's education, then they think it's somebody's responsibility. So they put it on the head of poverty. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, the current government has brought about free education and, and a lot of things that are helping the parents. In the primary schools, there is school feeding. And, and most of the schools, if you are able to get a different attire for the child, you are permitted to go to school and you're sure of getting one hot meal a day. But if we say that we are poor and we use, we, 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 we use our children in the work that are not permissible, that are not allowed, Will that get us out of poverty? It will keep us in perpetual poverty. So like I said, most of the times, if you analyze and you critically look at what some parents say is the reason for keeping their children in that state, poverty, then it is really that they have misprioritized because they have money to do other things, but it did not educate their child. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful answer. Um, parents, uh, so Ken is telling us that we should prioritize the education of our children. We should prioritize the education of our children. That should be first and foremost thing that we should think about. Um, I think just after this answer, there's another question that follows suit. So I would pose that question because it just follows in Jay, after James' question, what is our what are our laws? We have laws in Ghana. So, what are the laws saying about child labor? Is there a provision or a counseling or counseling? Is there a provision or counseling for parents who are engaging their children in the act or activities of child labor? Ghana has a lot of laws when it comes to child labor. Okay because Ghana was one of the first countries to ratify the Child Labor Convention. We have developed a lot of laws. And even originally in our law books, we have a lot of, even in our, our constitution, every child must be in school. And there are penalties regarding parents who don't send their children to school in our constitution. So we have a lot of laws. The, the problem is child labor is a social problem. If you uh, don't take care and you apply the laws, it might worsen the situation. That is why it's, it's, it's carefully, most of the laws and most of the, the documents against child labor are used for education mm -hmm. against engaging the children in 
Because if you, if, if, you, if you arrest a parent and you say because he's used, because sometimes it goes to a point where he's either imprisoned or something. So when you imprison the parent because he has used the child in child labor, who takes care of the child? Mm. So there are social, there are moral issues involved with the implementation of the, the laws. Otherwise, there are a lot of laws. And even at the community level, there are laws that we have child panels that uh, have the responsibility of talking to parents who use their children in child labor. Mm -hmm. So there are laws, there are a lot of laws in Ghana to, to make sure that children are no use or there, there are definitive measures in our law books against child labor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that awesome answer. There are punitive measures against child labor in our communities, but we just have to know when to implement them so that they don't turn around to affect the child. Affect the, the child that we are, trying, we are trying to protect. The same child we are, we are protecting. This question keeps coming up. So I will keep posting it. Um, this question keeps coming up. They, our viewers really want to know, when does children work? become child labor when does it become child labor the work of children at what point does it like become uh, child I labor? Said, <laughs> yeah when i was talking about the uh, definition of child labor i said sometimes we define child labor with an eye to the kind of work the child does okay. the type of uh, the, the the time the time of the day that the child does it, the duration of the, the, the work that the child does and the circumstance or the environment around which the child works. So even what we term as child work can easily glide into child labor because there's a thin line between child work and child labor. If, if like we're talking about, uh, somebody asks about, uh, is it not, good to do to, to to let the child help you in the house or some yes. kind of way if, I think if that was from a mother yes. Daniel and James. If, use this example if if you wake a child up at 10 the night to to wash bowls that's a child labor if that same child is washing the bowls in the morning it's not child labor so that if, means if you prevent it, he should she or he should be allowed to sleep. Right? To sleep. Okay. Yes. So in one one vein, the, the, the social, so we call it socialization, the, the child work can become child labor, depending on the type, the time of day you are involved with the child in that work. Okay. The number of hours in the day. Pile up clothes for the child to or bowls for the child to work. And that would take the child about four or five hours. That's child labor. Oh. Even though the child is permitted to work, do the washing in the day, but it has a number of hours the child should do that in the day so that he is permitted to go to school. We allow the children, we have something we call the HAF, the Child Labor Hazardous Activity Framework that has been developed by Ghana. And in it, we have permissible activities and non permissible activities for the each level of age of the child. And so even if uh, the child is allowed to do something and you go beyond the number of hours, you do it at the wrong time of the day. The environment around which the child is doing it is not defined or it's not clear, it's so dangerous to the child's health and life. It is child labor and sometimes uh, so worst form of child labor. But any activity that prevents the child from going to school or makes the child skip school is automatically worst form of child labor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ken, um, for breaking it down for us. Thank you for breaking it down for us. Um, so the, that means, in other words, if you're trying to deprive the child from education, sleep, uh, the child can do some work. But once the time is not appropriate, and maybe the job itself that the child is doing, it's hectic or it's difficult, mm. then it becomes child labor. Mm. And when it yes, is intense, it. then it becomes the worst form of child labor. Worst form. Okay, okay, thank that's you. That's the way it has to do with preventing the child from going to school. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome answer. Thank you for 
educating us. We are all learning from you today. We are learning so much on child labor. In which sectors of our economy is child labor prevalent in Ghana? So Ken, the did you get my, you yes, that please. question. I was, okay, I'll take the question again. No, that, yes. Last bit, okay. So I'll take the whole question again. In which sectors of our economy is child labor mm. prevalent? In, in which sectors of the economy can we find child labor? It's more prevalent there. Which of the sectors? Most of it is, is in the, in the, it will depend on, anyway, in, on the, in the, in the country, um, it's prevalent in the farming activities. Okay. In the farming activities, but child labor, um, happens in all sectors of, of life, in the towns, in the homes, in the factories, and, and everywhere human activity is going on, child labor is there. But most, most, much of it is on the farms, because you see, most, most of, many Ghanaians are farmers. Mm. Most of us are predominant, even those who are literate and have work, salary work, are still farming. And uh, most of, the cost of farming or the cost of farming in Ghana is, is, is expensive. And so the many, many worker farmers resort to children for cheap labor. <laughs> uh, that doesn't mean that the other work sectors don't also use children cheap labor, but farming is where they use children a lot because they're cheap labor. Like I was I said earlier on, uh, maybe if for, for, for laborers, farm laborers, sometimes if the adult takes 30, the, the children might take 20 uh, or, or even 50. And so the farmer finds it convenient in terms of savings to use the child. And, and sometimes they can also bully or exploit the child because uh, lab, laborers have a, a time that they close. And if it's a child, they can bully the child to work a bit ahead of the closing time so that they can cover more, which you can't do to adults. So many farmers prefer to use the children. Otherwise, there, there, there's no sector in the economy that there are no child, there's no child labor. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is a very sensitive topic and uh, our viewers are sending in their questions. We are happy that they want to know from you <laughs> different issues regarding child labor. Philomena Asoma is asking a question. He said, please, what happens to individuals what happens to individuals or persons who engage children in child labor? I don't know if you've witnessed any persecution or any punitive measures taken against an individual or yes, person. Uh, or... I have not witnessed, yes. No, maybe maybe child trafficking. If you know about uh, child, 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 child trafficking is an extreme case of child labor. Okay. Uh, for there, I know a lot of prosecutions have taken place. And so maybe if you can link it, you can see yes. But child labor, mm -hmm. uh, as it is, no, I have not witnessed any prosecution. Uh, like I said, it is a bit uh, dicey because mm -hmm. if you if you imprison the parent for engaging the child, who takes care of the child? So most of the time we use uh, uh, dialogue, okay, education, advice to mm -hmm. to get there. So in uh, many communities, they have formed the child labor. You see what you call the uh, CCPCs, Community Child Protection Committees, and many NGOs are working with them, uh, who where community members have voluntarily offered themselves in to, to to work in the committees where they are trained on child labor issues, and so they take care of child labor issues in the community, and so they do the education, they do the surveillance. If you are using your child in in certain communities in in an appropriate manner that might constitute child labor. The community members have the right to come to you and stop you and, and even uh, take you to the elders, the chief's house or the committee for uh, the investigation or discussion. So that is how far it is, it is born. But I have not witnessed any prosecution of child labor. Victor, so child in labor. extreme cases, in extreme cases of child labor, what can happen? In an extreme case of child labor, what can happen? In, in an extreme case, the child can lose his life. 
child can be named depending on the kind but of document. What happens? What like happens quarry. to so, the perpetrator? What happens to the perpetrator of the child labor? The one who is perpetrating. When, the when it comes to that, who is forcing the child to? Yes, do when the it comes to that, it be. It be when it comes to that, like I said, if it is a parent, mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit dicey. You can the still the parent are still spoken to, mm -hmm. but if it is uh, the child, because most of the child labor situations happen when the child is not staying with the biological parents, when the child is staying with the foster parents, with the uncles, with the aunts. That is when sometimes you'll be surprised they allow their own children to go to school, but their this child doesn't go to school. So when it happens like that. Uh, mm -hmm. The laws are applied. When the child dies, that is a serious matter. The mm -hmm. laws are applied. When the child is terribly wounded, the laws are applied, especially if it is coming directly from the perpetrator. The laws are applied. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Wonderful answer. So uh, that question from our viewers. <laughs> so what interventions are available for communities where poverty has forced most households to push children into some form of paid or unpaid work to support their homes. I, I, I know we have the LIP, okay. the Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, they are doing a lot and they're expanding gradually. It, it is just that they are not operating in all communities and all districts. You know, the matter so of So what, what are they doing? What, what are they doing to elevate the poverty? What, ah. what are they doing? What does LEAP do? As much as us know about LEAP, they, they provide some monthly support to the aged, to okay. the, to the, yeah, to the sick and the vulnerable. And so uh, parents who are very aged and who are sick and who have no support or, or who are down with some kind of ailments are giving this kind of support monthly so that they can take care of themselves. Then we also have the, I believe even the school feeding is another good program that supports you because sometimes uh, parents say their children don't go to school because some schools ask for some statements in the form of canteen fee for the feeding. The government has stopped that. So the child goes to school uh, and just carries his bowl and the food is served. And he's, he's, that, is, that alone is enough to encourage children to go to school. Uh, some NGOs are also doing a lot in our communities to elevate poverty in various forms. And so there are a lot of programs going on in the communities, uh, in addition to the few that I've mentioned, to elevate poverty. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome answers. And you are, in fact, you are giving us insightful information this afternoon. Things that are being done all around to support children. Thank you so much. What is the ILO, ILO the International Labor Organization? What is it doing to mm -hmm. combat child labor? Uh, you did mention that they have a team and we've all realized that the day we are marking the day um, that was, it fell on the 12th of June, right? So, and as yes. part of activities, we are doing this presentation. Can you tell us mm. what ILO is doing to combat child labor? Yeah, ILO uh, in 2002 mm -hmm. launched the global, uh, the World Day Against Child Labor and it was supposed to draw global attention to the extent of child labor in the world and to mobilize resources and support in, in, in uh, trying to eliminate it. And so each year on the 12th, that is why we are celebrating this. The day is, it brings about a lot of governments, a lot of employer, employers and, and workers in civil society and millions around the world to highlight the plight of children in child labor and to see how uh, they can eliminate it. And uh, the, so the, it is the mandate of child labor. It is also child labor that uh, brought about this conven the convention 1A2, which is the worst form of child labor, to, to show that every country has, has to rectify it to ensure that they implement certain activities to eliminate worst form of child labor. Because there's no country in the world, there's no child labor. And ILO coordinates and supervises all this and ensures that they're working, their permissible work standards in every workplace. And all this also includes 
preventing workplaces or, or industries from using children under age and using children in dangerous situations or dangerous work. So that is how, how ILO comes in. I know uh, some years uh, ago, ILO was also involved in practically implementing some child labor activities in some districts, especially in Ghana, where they implemented practically, they executed some programs to eliminate child labor, where they gave support okay. to children who were identified as child laborers to their, to their, their this, and trained their parents. For example, if a child, they had a program or a software, like a, a, a tool to select the sex children, they run the tool in the community uh, if the child is picked. There is a, there's a package to support the child, the parents of the child. So the child is given some school uniforms and some basic school materials, bags and sandals to help the child go to school, a size books, mass sets and the rest. And the parents of the child, especially the mothers, are given some training in, in, in the handicraft of, the, of her choice and then given some seed capital to start some form of business to be able to support the child. So this is how what child labor, uh, new, uh, ILO has done so far to help eliminate child labor, especially in Ghana. Great. And I hope it is happening all over the world. <laughs> great, great. That is good news. That is good news. Thank you for letting us in on that information. Thank you so much for sharing. In your presentation, you said no one benefits from child labor. Mm -hmm. You said no one benefits from child labor. Mm -hmm. Why do you say no one benefits from child labor? Why is it so? Because we know that people engage the children to do labor, to do this labor for their own benefit. And why do you say nobody benefits from child labor? Yeah, in the face of the statement, it looks uh, uh, like it is not <laughs> true, mm. but technically it is true. Okay. Because if if children are engaged in child labor, it deprives them from their wholesome development, including education, including other learning, other trades or other jobs, to make them useful citizens in future. We all know what happens if we have a bulk, the bulk of our our children of our youth not trained. To be useful to themselves in future. So it means they grow up to, to not to be able to support themselves and they grow up to lack. And we know what happens to a hungry man. So if you, we, 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 we put the children in the situation of child labor and prevent them from developing themselves, all that we are gathering for ourselves will not be helpful because these very children will turn to armed robbers and thieves and ransack our homes on, on the roads and hijack us and take what we have gathered for ourselves. So in the end, what you gather is not useful to you. Sometimes you will even lose your life in the event. And where is the use or what is the use of what you have gathered? That is, it is in this sense that I say child labor doesn't benefit anybody. You might get the benefit today, but going forward, it might be useless to you because you will call in fire on yourself because children uh, or men who have grown to be useless to themselves will come to you to take what you have gathered for yourself. Thank you. So the repercussion is dangerous. We might think that we are enjoying it today, but at the long run, it will come to hunt us. It will come okay. to hunt us. So we exactly. all have to do our part. We all have to do our part to eliminate, to avoid child labor, to avoid child labor. Also, in your presentation, you did, we saw that you did mention um, the work of national program for elimination of the worst forms of child labor in COCO. Can you tell us a bit about that? Can you tell us a bit about that organization? Uh, the, the national program for the elimination of the worst forms of child labor in Kuku was established in 2006. And it, with the aim of, uh, with the, the focus was on Kuku, with the aim of eliminating child labor in Kuku producing areas. And it covered all the uh, six Kuku producing regions, it, 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 except the Northern region, Upper West, Upper East, and Greater Accra, where we don't produce Kuku. It covered all the other regions and it's supposed to cover all the districts. Uh, this was because there had been some accusations of children being used in producing cocoa in Ghana and Kuduwa and other places. 
And so there was a threat of boycott of cocoa in mm. the international market. And mm. so there were some uh, senators and congressmen in the US who took it upon themselves to mobilize uh, resources and to mobilize people to see how they could fight and offset the threat and to help uh, the, uh, the sub region, especially countries producing cocoa, to set up programs that would stop the menace. And so that is how come uh, the West Forum of Child Labor or in MPCLC was established. Uh, we have a sister program like that in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, the aim is to run programs and to uh, train and to educate people on the effects and dangers of child labor in cocoa communities. Even though uh, that was the focus, but even though child labor, as I said, uh, the focus on this one was on for cocoa. So we, we had programs, we had activities that we ran in most of our communities and it included uh, training, especially we had the district child protection committee we call the DCPC, which included all subvented government heads who were trained on child labor to supervise the child labor activities in the district. And then to the communities, we had the CCPCs, the community child protection committees, I explained that earlier on. And so they were to report to the uh, district child labor protection committees. And, and, and so we ran programs, we trained the district child labor protection committees and went ahead to treat the, the community ones who take them through child labor issues. Uh, and so they, they were, like I said, playing the role of surveillance and protection, guiding, making sure that community members don't use their children in areas that are described as child labor. So we have programs also like what I explained about child labor. We had a, uh, what you call the Ghana monitoring system, the GCLMS. It was a software, data collection software that would if you run it in the community to pick children who are engaged in child labor and go to the community and, and, and administer the questionnaire. And there's a program that would help bring out those children who are suspected to be child labor. When it is confirmed, then we supported them with school books, some school bags, sandals, pens, pencil, erasers, masks, and a lot of their uniforms. And I, I, that, is, that was for the child. Then for the parents, we put them together and train them in handicraft work in, uh, of their choice. Then give them some support, like uh, startup, startup capitals to start some businesses to be able to stand on their own and support the child to go to school. So that is uh, in brief, the MPCLC. Thank you. Thank you for the awesome answer. And thank you for telling us what the um, national program for the elimination of the worst forms of child labor in cocoa is all about. Thank you, that's, that's a good work. And um, we, we're going to wrap up. I don't know if you have a message for us before we come to the end of the program. If you have a message you want to leave with us on child labor. Yeah, I would say a question, that. Uh, a question very... just came in. A question just came in from our viewer. Let me, let okay. me ask that last question before you give us your uh, final statement. Before you give us your final statement. So, um, if you see a child, she's she's asking. If you see a child and you think that the activity that the child is involved in can be classified as child labor. How do you report such act? How do you report it? What is the procedure of reporting child labor issues? If, yeah, if it is in the community, most of the communities now, especially the southern sector, have mm. the child labor uh, committees. OK. Uh, where you can go there and report. Mm -hmm. The child labor committee sometimes can a report to the social welfare. Okay. Who can you? They have the mechanisms to be able to withdraw the child, to be able to speak to. I mean, that kind of. So there's a procedure. When it becomes too serious, sometimes they go to the police because the, the police were part of immigration and all those forces were part of the system, the, the MPCLC system. So depending on the kind of case, then we bring in the appropriate organization to deal with the case. If it be it was a, a criminal case, the police obviously will come in. It was a social case, the social welfare will come in. So mm -hmm. that's how we handle it. So if you have, uh, depending on the situation of the child, you either go to the police, you go to the child protection committee or social welfare or something and they, 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 they be taken care of. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for this insightful mess.
pro information that you have shared with us. Your pre the presentation is excellent and we are so grateful. Um, now, can you please share your parting message with us? Yeah, I would say that <laughs> I'm very grateful to be part of this because it's something that is very dear to my heart. And for those who have made time to listen to us, I believe that they also have a role to play and they have an interest because we have been here for about an hour and to, to listen to us for this long, it means we have an interest. So I would uh, urge them that the, the interest should end here. Let us see how we can put our efforts together in, in any way that we can, in a, where we stay, where we live, in our environment, to see, make sure that children are not engaged in child labor. Otherwise, if you fold your hands and say you don't care, like I said, uh, when the child becomes an arm robber, it doesn't know, <laughs> know who is going to, you don't know whether you'll be the next victim. That is why. So let us all put our efforts together and show concern and interest in the welfare of our children. At the, the end of the presentation said that when the child dies, the future dies. If we want to hope future, let's put our in the So all hands on deck. <laughs> all hands on deck to get the job done. To get the job yeah. done. Thank you, Kenneth, for collaborating with the Public Affairs Session and the American Spaces. Please accept our appreciation for your time and for the insightful information you've shared with us. I believe we've all learned much about child labor through your great presentation. To our viewers, we say thank you all for joining today's session. We hope that everyone will support to eliminate child labor. Before ending today's program, to viewers in Ghana, I would like to tell you about an educational online resource that you may find helpful. That's eLibrary USA. It is a state-of-the-art digital library with nine premier electronic databases that includes digital newspapers, magazines, journals, videos, and dissertations. Usually this resource is only available to use in person at the American spaces, but due to the global pandemic, we are giving the public remote access to the resource. For all persons who are interested in accessing the database, please sign up using the link provided in the comment box. It is a form, it is a form, it's a Google form that you have to complete so that once you, comp you complete it, you would receive within 48 hours, you should receive your login details to be able to access the database, the eLibrary USA database. And that concludes our program for today. Thank you all. We hope to see you on Friday, June 18th, from 10.30 to 11.30 for an interesting session on the use of Ghanaian language in effective reportage of gender-based violence. This is going to be an interesting topic. So make time to join us on Friday. For more information about our future programs, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at US Embassy Ghana. Stay safe and remember, COVID is still with us. Keep wearing your mask in public and bye for now. Enjoy the rest of the day.